Here to the near side, it's Farr and Young. Out of the gun is Perez. He goes for the, the pass up the seam out of the backfield, and that is caught. Shane Haney into Raider territory across the 30. And... Welcome to this edition of Cougars Football with Joe Muchangimba. I'm your host, Brian Freeman, with Cougars head coach Joe Muchangimba. Canyon coming off a loss to open the season this past Friday, 46-14 against Cedar Ridge. Coming up this Friday in San Marcos, and we'll talk more about the game against the Rattlers coming up in just a bit. First coach, look back at, uh, to the game against the Raiders from this past week. Obviously tough to open the season that way. What did you take away from the game? Well, you know, you always go out there and win the football game, and we didn't get that done. But, you know, there were some positives we took away from it. You know, I thought we played well offensively. We moved the ball um, pretty well at times. You know, there were some drives that we didn't finish. Uh, you know, obviously that's not the intent, but, then, you mm -hmm. know, nonetheless, we stalled out inside the 20 twice. Um, you know, we get inside there 40 a couple of times. So that's four possessions down on there in the field. We come away with no points on those two. But... I thought we ran the ball really well. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Xavier really managed the game game well. We had some pretty good performances by some individuals. Um, defensively, we, um, you know, when we were good, we were good. When we were bad, we were bad. Yeah. Uh, we played really good defensively most of the game. Unfortunately, most of the game ain't going to win a game for you. You know, mm -hmm. we gave up some big plays, some really big plays, and they all ended up in touchdowns. So we ended up on the short end of it this week. Well, you mentioned the play of Xavier Perez. Looking at the offense as a whole, 338 yards for you on Friday. Xavier responsible for over 200 of those, also counting for two touchdowns. You told us in the show last week you had big expectations for Xavier. This is his second year now playing on varsity, now as a junior in your right. program. Right. So how much did he live up to those expectations for at least one game? Well, you know, it, it, it's a process still. You know, and during the scrimmage, we thought that he kind of um, – you know, he maybe didn't play as well as he needed to. That was two weeks ago, and then this week he goes out and performs pretty well. So mm -hmm. as long as we continue to uh, groom him and, and, and keep coaching him up, and as long as he keeps taking it and growing, I think we're going to be okay. Somebody involved with a lot of big plays for you on Friday was Seth Haney. And when you, when you look at the need for an offense, it's tough to have those 10, 12 play drives for an entire 48-minute football game. Those home runs are needed. Yeah. So in, in that regard, that's got to be a big plus for you moving forward. Well, you know, you, you, like you said, big plays are huge. And you know, I alluded to that, you know, Cedar Ridge had several of them, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we had a couple of them, and Seth had his hand in most of them. Uh, so Seth's going to be a pretty good weapon for us. we got to get a uh, little bit little more uh, production out of our wide receiver core maybe, you know. Had a kid, Trevor Pate, caught a deep ball down the middle. You know, tremendous catch, but, you know, penalize, bring it back so it doesn't yeah. count. But um, he's going to become a big part of our offense the same. You brought up the play of the defense earlier, alluding to the big plays you surrendered. How do you go about addressing that as you get ready for the game this week? Well, you know, you get in there Saturday morning after the game and you watch a video, you know, mm -hmm. and you look at it and you go, well, schematically, you probably didn't do anything. You know, we weren't out of position. We didn't really line up bad. We, it's not like we didn't know what was going on. We just didn't make some plays. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to play a little bit faster and you know, kind of cut the creases down a little bit and make tackles when we get a chance to. Well, then again, look back at the Cougars game this past Friday against Round Rock Cedar Ridge. Coming up in just a bit, a preview of this upcoming uh, week's game against San Marcos. But right now, we're going to send things over to our very own Emily Wick with this week's Cougar Challenge. Welcome back to another episode of, you guessed it, Cougars Challenge. I'm here today with a great group of guys who are ready for fun. Guys, can you do me a favor and introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Trevor Hopkins. <laughs> I'm Zach Monster. I'm David Gonzalez. <laughs> Y'all ready to have some fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. So our first question today is a true or false question. The cougar has no natural predator. True or false? Oh, that was tough. I'm going to have to give it that to Zach, definitely. though. It's mine. It's better looking. All right, I'm going to have to go with false. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Zach. The answer is true. You are true. a senior in high school. How do you do that? <laughs> but that's not a that natural, natural predator. Key words, uh, Although words humans do, do yes, question. that is true. Humans do, but it's <laughs> natural predator. It doesn't have one. The cougar is that cool oh. and tough 
<laughs> that no other animal listen, goes and seeks it out. That's what we learned at Cougar Camp. There you go. Okay. What is the fastest land animal in the... Oh! It's a cougar. It's a, it's, it's a cougar. It's, it's a, a cougar. Cheetah. Trevor, no. It's not. Zach? Oh, he didn't even read it. Oh, David. He, got, he just has a, a cheetah. cheetah. A cheetah is correct. <laughs> Good job, David. A cougar <laughs> it's cougar for a reason. <laughs> okay, here is a bonus question. Does anyone know how fast the cheetah can run? <laughs> Zach. That was hard. Yeah, no, you gonna break that. 60 miles per hour. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. Anyone <laughs> else? <laughs> uh, 45. Nope, even faster. David? 70. Pretty close. You were the closest, so I'm gonna give it to you. He oh, actually he runs 78 miles an I hour. That. that was. That's yeah. pretty fast. I knew it. I just wanted y'all to get more points. I'm a negative schooler. two now. So. <laughs> negative I might two. break the no. record. <laughs> You're going for the record today. So with David in the lead, here is your next question. Who is the main Pokemon that is yellow in color? That's, that David. That's oh, so my easy. oh my god! Oh my god! I hope Pikachu. Pikachu. Very good job. <laughs> now here's a bonus question. Who does Pikachu evolve into? David? Right you. <gasps> you are a nerd. That's a nerd. Yes. <laughs> That's a nerd. You are correct. That's a, Good that's job. A, that's a nerd That's question. four points. <laughs> that's four points? Get ready. The next question is, true or false, a pregnant goldfish <laughs> is called a twit. Trevor? True. True. Hey, that's what's up. I don't I ever twit. <laughs> Do you think yeah. if you were a twit, you would have a Twitter? Definitely. It would be like, follow me at Tweets by Hop on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's I would think so, too. There you that's go. What, that's what I would do. So plug. I like four followers. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a twit, which I am not, <laughs> follow me on Twitter, Tweets by Hop. <laughs> tweets by Hop. So it was a great game, it was tough, but ultimately, David, you won the challenge. <laughs> the <This beast>. game's <laughs> rigged. <laughs> it's rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> Coach, Brant, <laughs> back to you. Go Coops, y'all were late, y'all didn't even try. Y'all need, oh my gosh. Thanks, Emily, and by the way, to confirm, this is not a rigged game. By the way, everything is being played by the rules here. Uh, Coach, all joking aside, it's kind of fun to see your players unwind a bit. Yeah, it, it's good just to kind of get them out of, you know, get them, you know, we, you try to keep your mind on business all the time, you know, and there's really, there's not much play time going on, but when they get an opportunity like that, it's fun to watch them, and it, it's really fun to watch them kind of squirm around when they're asked to spell something, and in particular head coach's name, they don't know how, so it, you, that was fun. You know, we, we, uh, we had a little tutorial with him, and I think he's better off now. Well, not only is your name tough to spell, but for those who actually see it, i got to imagine you get all kinds of different pronunciations of it, too. That's why they call me Coach Mooch. Coach not, Mooch. Yeah, it's easy. That's simple. That's, easy, That's simple. All right. Well, again, uh, Kenny is taking on Sam Marcus this Friday. We're going to take a break, come back, and preview the game. We have more coming up. Cougars football with Joe Mooch again. Where Zaxby's is from. Some like it classic. Some like it saucy. For others, it's got to be crispy but everyone loves the flavor that brings us together. And whether you like it spicy or old school, you'll like it even more. Because Zaxby's five fan favorites are now just $5.99 each. Friends, family, flavor, Zaxby's. If you bank at Frost, we'll help keep your money safe. If you use your Frost debit card, the chip will make it more secure. If there's a suspicious transaction on your card, you'll get an alert. If you do, you can freeze your card with the Frost app. If you lose your phone, Touch ID login will help keep the app secure. Of course, if all you need is help from people who care, we've got that too. Welcome back to Cougars Football with Joe Muchagemba, Brent Freeman with Coach Mooch. And 
The Cougars trying to bounce back this week as they host the San Marcos Rattlers there at Cougar Football Stadium. The Rattlers come in 1-0. They beat East Central last week to kick off their 2017 year 28 to nothing. And coach, here we are again, another tough non-district opponent. Right, they're tough. You know, they're coming off a win. You know, they had you know pretty good success last year, got in the playoffs. Um, coach Soto and his staff do a really good job with their with their, with their kids up there. They, um, you know, they're going to come in here. They. You know, I don't know. Defensively, they're going to be coach. You know, coach Gilbert over there. He, he does a nice job. They're going to play hard. Yeah. And if they're going to play hard, or they're not going to play for him. And they're going to be sound. Um, offensively, you know, they they moved their safety over from last year's playing quarterback for him right now. And he's uh, everything runs through him. Mm -hmm. If we don't handle him well um, in the run game, uh, when the pass pro breaks down and maybe he's got a scramble. If we don't handle him very well, then it's going to be a long night for us. So. You know, a lot of our game is going to be geared towards controlling him and keeping him in check. Yeah, you mentioned Prudy Calderon, the quarterback for the Rattlers, 160 yards of offense and the win over the Hornets last week and accounted for three touchdowns. Uh, you mentioned just how problematic he can be to slow down. What about the players around him? He's got some, he's got some guys around him, and that, that helps him. He's got a couple of running backs. Got one of them that kind of dinged up last week. We'll see if he's in the ball game or not. But he's got some speed back there. Um, he's got some power back there, depending on who they, want, who they choose to put in there. I've um, got a couple receivers that are pretty big guys also. So he's got some weapons around him that help him. Uh, but like I said, he, he's, he's the one that makes it all go. As we said, the Rattlers beat the Hornets last week, a fellow 27-6A team, and they shut them out yeah. defensively. Talked about the defense earlier, forced three turnovers, yeah. held East Central to about 170 yards for the entire game. Right. What challenges are you up against when you're facing San Marcos's defense? They're sound. You know, you're not just going to get them. You're not going to trick them into lining up bad or anything. You're going to have to go out there and beat them. You know, mm -hmm. they, you know, they kind of flip back and forth between a three down and a four down, depending on what you're in um, as far as the front goes. So we'll kind of have to control that and, and be able to be able to try to get get what we want on the field and then execute when we do. Every coach in America, whether you're coaching middle school, high school, college, or pro, would tell you you'll see the most improvement from your football team from week one to week two. And what areas do you want to see the most improvement? Well, we got to be more consistent on defense. You know, I think we got to prevent the big play, and that's you'll hear that every week. You know, if we give up big plays, you'll hear. You know, that's just part of the game. You, it's hard to win when you give up. You know, big play after big play after big play. But mm -hmm. on the flip side of it, we're going to have to create some some more of those to kind of counter that. You know, we got some guys that can do it. Uh, we just got to be a little more productive on that side. To, to, you know, we ran the ball really well. We moved mm -hmm. the ball, we fought well, but we need some of those shots and those big, big chunks at, at a time, as you said, so we don't have to maybe, you know, go 14, 15 plays yep. to get it done. All right, well, Coach, good luck on Friday. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Again, Canyon will host San Marcos this Friday at 7.30 from Cougar Stadium. We'll have live coverage right here on CougarsNetwork.com with pregame coverage starting at 7.15. For Coach Mooch, I'm Brian Freeman. This has been Cougars Football with Joe Moochagembo, and we'll see you again next week. Wow! Ah!